These are three ancient manuscripts containing secrets of mathematics and astronomy. They were written on palm leaves 1500 years ago, but two of them have been lost forever. We've only heard whispers of what they contained from other sources that referenced them. The three manuscripts were the life's work of Indian mathematician Aryabhata, and the one surviving manuscript is called the Aryabhatiya. It changed mathematics, introducing sign tables, an accurate calculation of pi, and thoughts about the motion of the stars, but it also changed how many ancient students thought about and learned math. Before the printing press, how could mathematical knowledge be reliably passed down? Writing on palm leaves was common, yet it was far from secure. Two-thirds of Aryabhata's work has been lost this way, along with countless other manuscripts sacrificed to fire, war, and time. To ensure that mathematics could persist and evolve, early mathematician scholars turned to a more resilient method – poetry. Aryabhata wasn't the first Indian mathematician to encode math in poetry, but his surviving work, the Aryabhatiya, meaning a composition of Aryabhata, did push the practice forward, coming up with new ways to encode numbers with letters. It is actually one of the most challenging math documents to read, and stumped the outside world for hundreds of years. Not just because it was written in Sanskrit, but because the knowledge is embedded in verse that is meant to be sung like a song. Although this hasn't stopped it from having a big scientific influence in India as well as across the world, it has undergone many interpretations and translations, so let's see if we can understand it. A quick word from this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Aryabhata's manuscript was a secret to anyone outside of India, but as time has gone on, borders between countries have become less of a barrier to the spread of knowledge. And that is even more true when you use a VPN. A VPN offers the ability to change your virtual location while accessing the internet, this offers some benefits, for example, when you are traveling, you will still be able to access websites the way you would back home. Changing the location that a website thinks you are visiting from can also unlock better deals and prices meant only for certain regions, or content that is location blocked, including some news sites and streaming services like Netflix. Surfshark also has a feature called Alternative ID, which allows you to generate a new name, email, and phone number to use on sites you don't want to give your real data to. This helps to avoid spam emails and your data getting into the hands of data brokers. Visit surfshark.com slash tibbies to check it out and get four extra months on your subscription. Thanks Surfshark, and now back to the video. It was the year 499 AD. Mathematical knowledge was fragmented. Concepts were being lost every day. Aryabhata was a 23-year-old genius, and he had one chance. He wrote the Aryabhatiya at a crucial moment, bringing together all the fragments of math and encoding them in a form that could survive the chaos. But how did he do that? In essence, he turned the decimal place value system into syllables. Here's an example which gives a list of astronomical parameters, all in one stanza. To the untrained eye, it looks like a devotional hymn or a riddle, but once you know the code, the value each symbol represents, the numbers emerge. To read it, we can first translate the Sanskrit letters into Roman characters, like this page shows. They are grouped as vowels and consonants. These two short lines from Aryabhata explain his method of encoding numbers. These letters, or groups of letters, called Varga, correspond to the numbers 1 to 25, and these letters, called A Varga, are 30 to 100 in increments of 10. Aryabhata came up with a place value system, which is a familiar concept to us. In our numbers, this place represents ones, this place tens, this hundreds, and so on. Where we might start with a string of zeros before assigning each number to its place, Aryabhata started with a string of vowels. When reading his writing, if there is a letter next to a vowel, such as gr, where r is one of the vowels, then g is the number 
and R is its place value, or the position in the string where it should be written down. The places oscillate between A Varga and Varga letters, so GR stands for the number G, which is 3, written in the Varga R spot, since G is a Varga letter. Consider the remaining spots as zeros. So the number represented by GR is 3, with six zeros after it, 3 million. Here's another example where these letters are assigned to these place values indicated by the vowels, which results in this number. This way, a stanza of his writing contained both words and numbers and could be chanted in verse. Students would sit at the feet of Aryabhata as the verses were chanted, each line yielding a new mathematical revelation when unlocked, such as this one, which states that the circumference of a circle is 3.1416 times its diameter, and he says that that is an approximation of pi. Each of these mathematical poems would be read aloud with a certain rhythm called a meter. There are a few different commonly used meters in Sanskrit. One is called the Arya meter, and this is what it sounds like. Nitigna, niatigna, vatagna, apibavanti vetagna, brahmagna, apilabhya. Much of ancient Indian mathematics was driven by astronomy. In the Aryabhatiya, we see that the desire to perform astronomical calculations, such as finding the positions and movements of stars, required more advanced numerical techniques to be developed. The Aryabhatiya itself contains a total of 121 stanzas, which are broken into four chapters. The first chapter contains 13 stanzas and lays out the basic definitions, such as units of time, the diameters of the earth, sun, and moon, as well as the life of the universe thus far. The second chapter contains 33 stanzas and focuses on math, including geometry and the construction of the sign table. It also has quadratic and linear indeterminate equations. The sign table constructed by Aryabhata is credited as the first complete sign table in the history of mathematics, potentially rivaling partial tables constructed by Greek mathematicians several hundred years prior. The last two chapters of the text explore astronomy, including 25 stanzas on determining the position and motion of the sun, moon, and planets, and 50 stanzas on the motion of these bodies on the celestial sphere, which was treated as a kind of virtual sphere surrounding the Earth that represents all we can see in the sky. There are lots of things that Aryabhata got right about astronomy, including his determination that the moon doesn't generate its own light, but instead reflects sunlight. However, he also believed that applied to other stars. He did know that planets orbit in ellipses instead of in perfect circles. In one passage, he anticipated the concept of a spinning Earth rotating on its axis 1,000 years before Copernicus or Galileo had the same idea. However, Aryabhata did still support a geocentric model of planetary motion, which set the Earth as the central axis around which the whole universe rotated. The same way that a mnemonic can be used to help remember more complicated ideas, Explaining mathematical concepts in verse gave readers of the Aryabhatiya the opportunity for a quicker memorization of essential scientific concepts. However, this method of learning is not without its downsides. In particular, the true meaning of what the Aryabhatiya is saying in any given verse can be very difficult, if not impossible, without reading it alongside commentary from other scholars. This has led to many commentaries throughout history and even some disagreement about the interpretation or translation of different verses, such as whether Aryabhata made an error when describing the volume of a sphere. One of the text's most extensive commentaries was written by mathematician and astronomer Bhaskara I in 629 AD. Fittingly, these two astronomers are now not only tied together in history, but in space as well. Two of India's first satellites, launched into space in the 1970s, were named after these ancient scholars, 
and the Bhaskara-1 and the Aryabhata satellites respectively has spent 10 years and 17 years operating in space. Bhaskara championed a new method of learning in his own works, which focused less on rote memorization and more on proving mathematical concepts. Proofs are not something that Aryabhata included. The surviving work of Aryabhata and the other poetic works from Indian scholars before and after him showed that mathematical truth can be sung as well as calculated, that a theorem can be a verse and a formula can be a story. The Aryabhatiya would go on to have influence far beyond the life of Aryabhata himself, including serving as inspiration for many later Islamic and European scientists and mathematicians. You can even see traces of Aryabhata in the math we use today, such as the words sine and cosine coming from attempted translations of the words ja and koja as introduced by Aryabhata. Even the sign table itself, as presented by Aryabhata, would go on to inspire the development of modern trigonometry. We are glad this work persisted, not just in the physical form on palm leaves, but also as a memorable tune stuck in the minds of all his pupils. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. A special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Gigi.